As a college professor, you may be wondering what course design is right about now, or more importantly, why it's so important to you. Well, course design involves planning for your students' learning, and that's something that's always important, regardless of our instructional format. But when you teach online, the online learning environment you put together is the landscape that your students will leverage to develop the knowledge and skills you expect them to master. When an online class is effectively designed, the objectives, assessments, and activities are in alignment, creating a learner-centered environment. This empowers online learners to understand what you expect of them, rather than making learning a guessing game. In learner-centered environments, students also understand why they are completing activities, because the relationship between the activity and their learning objective is clear. So what are the steps involved with designing an online course? Well, they don't start where you might expect them to. Often, when we teach a class, we approach our subject matter by organizing it logically into sequence topics that will be delivered to students over time, right? That is part of the online course design process, but it's actually not where we start. Instead of starting at the beginning of our course, we need to identify the knowledge and skills we expect our students to have as they complete the course. After all, if we don't know where we're going, we'll never get there. Altogether, there are three steps in the online course design process. One, identify desired results, which we've just previewed a little bit. Two, determine acceptable evidence. And three, plan learning experiences and facilitation. Let's take a closer look at each step. A moment ago, we examined step one and identified the importance of starting with a clear understanding of the skills and knowledge you expect your students to have at the completion of the course. This is the step where content in the course would be organized into manageable chunks, referred to as learning modules or learning units. Each of those modules will include clear, measurable learning objectives that communicate to students what they're expected to be able to do by the time they complete that module. The module objectives are aligned to support the overarching course skills and knowledge or course outcomes that you've already identified. In step one, what you're really doing is identifying what you want your students to know. In step two, determine acceptable evidence. You move deeper into the design of each learning module. The modules already have learning objectives, which you established in step one. Now your task is to think about how your students will demonstrate to you what they have learned. A more common word for this process is assessment. In step two, you're identifying how you will know that they've learned. And remember, it's always important for your students to also be able to identify that they've learned as well. The third step in the course design process is plan learning experiences and facilitation. Now you begin to create the activities that students will engage and participate in. These are their learning experiences. Through these activities, they will grow, develop, and master the objectives you identified at the start of the module. In step three, you are identifying what they will do. And that is how you design a learner-centered online course. In summary, to design your online course, you will identify the skills and knowledge you expect your students to have at the completion of the course. These are the course outcomes to which all the module objectives, assessments, and activities will be aligned. 
Then organize your course into manageable learning modules. Identify the duration of each module. Module duration should strive to be consistent in duration, especially in accelerated online courses. Now apply the three steps of online course design to each of your learning modules. Step one, identify desired results. Step two, determine acceptable evidence. And step three, plan learning experiences and facilitation.